and then the pattern calls for a brown and a grizzly hackle I happen to have a, a um, cape here that is brown and grizzly so I you know I can get by with only using one feather instead of having to have one of each There are some people that can really go through flies, tie them in a hurry, but most of mine I, I tie myself and I'm not in a hurry when I do and uh, I don't want to get in a hurry. just a little under 50,000 in, in 1978 and um, you know I don't know what it's worth today I know that if I wanted to sell it I could sell it in probably less than a week but I would have to replace it we're lucky with what we got where we got it and lucky that we got it when we got it um, because I, I have no idea how a young couple would take and, and uh, try and buy a house at today's um, prices. I probably started fly fishing in the mid 60s. I was born and raised in Missoula and been pretty much outdoors type of guy my whole life. At the time I was fishing with a couple of guys that owned a, a fly shop and that's where I bought my first real fly rod and I worked for them for a while and that's how I was able to earn some money so I could buy more fly fishing equipment and, and uh, still not feel like I was taking too much from the family budget. For the tail on this one, I am going to use blonde elk hair. Stimulator is a fly that is doesn't necessarily match anything. Um, sometimes can be very effective. Now, um, taxes are certainly, uh, I mean, they're, they're terrible. Um, they keep going up and they don't, uh, you know, you don't basically have anything to say about it. Uh, I do have some friends that have, have taken and, and uh, contested their taxes and have had them adjusted. But it's like, you know, why should you have to go down and, and complain and contest the fact? Uh, it should be something that needs to be handled differently so that it doesn't drive um, people like us out of our homes.
just the satisfaction of, of catching a fish on a fly tide. It's kind of that simple. You, you know, you can go buy flies anywhere from a buck a piece or maybe even a little less, up to three or four dollars a piece. But something about tying your own flies and catching a fish on it are just, just, um, and, you know, I can go out in a day and lose a dozen flies but I didn't really cost me that much other than my time. Well, somehow they're going to have to control inflated prices on housing. I mean, it, it, to, to think that a lot of these places are bringing twice as much money as they did four or five years ago, it's uncomprehendable and, and it's not, not fair or right because you're paying taxes on what that inflated price is, not what truly is the same home you had that hasn't changed a bit. As long as we got people from all over the rest of the country trying to come in here, willing to buy these homes and pay asking price plus, it's going to keep driving the dollars up and it's going to force a lot of native Montanans out of here. And you wrap it forward, leaving enough to for a little head on it. And this hackle is wanting to be stubborn. It's not wanting to roll over like it's supposed to. It's a lot harder to go someplace and feel like you're by yourself. Yeah, that's almost non-existent. Where 15 or 20 years ago, you could go out on the side of a mountain someplace, or be out on a stream someplace, or on the river someplace, and you could actually feel like you might be the only one there. Um, but today's world, that is not the case. I, I probably would have to say that I was lucky to grow up when I did, uh, because we did have more access to the back country. We had um, more roads we could go on where today they're all gated and locked up at the, right off the highway. Uh, fishing, you used to be able to go f fishing and get on the river and maybe not see anybody else all day. few years, uh, Bitterit would have to be an example, 
but I've seen it where you might be on the bitter and floating the river and be able to look up and down the river and see eight to ten other people doing the exact same thing. That's not the same um, as what I grew up with, what I like to see, what I like to feel with the outdoors. You never know what's around the next corner. Might be some elk, might be a beaver, might be otters, you know, bald eagles in the next tree, family of geese. They're just, there's just so much to enjoy and it changes every trip down the river. I, I just enjoy being out and uh, you know, it can even rain. <laughs>